All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakhwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting the good fight of faith and truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly, and Shalom to the Akwath, which is the women believers, Shalom to you. And um, I want to talk about the fountains of living water. You know, um, the Lord was very graceful for giving us this water when we was in the state of a drought. We ain't know who we were. We ain't know what was going on. We were just living in the world thinking that this is it. And we have to, you know, chase after the American dream, you know? So it said when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, Yahweh, will hear them, the power of Israel, I will not forsake them. You know, um, and this is what happened. Because in Romans 8, it talks about how your spirit uttereth, you know, that your mouth can't utter. You know, so your spirit within you is uttering that your mouth can't utter. So deep in our spirit, even when we was in the world, we had a you know, intuition or epiphany of this can't be it. This ain't life. Like it's, it's more than this, you know? Um, so the Lord through the spirit, because as I say in Jeremiah one and five, before you was formed, I knew thee. So the Lord consecrated every single one of us who been called that endure to the end. Cause that's what it's about. So, um, through my estimation a little time that I've been in the truth, I see men, my teachers who've been in this thing, you know, starting with the elders, you have, they've been in the thing for 30 to 25 years. You got the apostles 30 plus. Then you got the new, the new, um, era elders, the YouTube era. You got 15 years, you know, 15 to 10 years and then on down. You know, so and if you stand as strong and you going hard for the Lord and all the afflictions and false accusations and the tribulations that you go through, and you still stand firm. then yeah, you, you have a good chance of being part of that number. So that's the ones that he gave water to. And it said, I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. So in this place, Israel and Babylon the Great, that's where the truth started. In this place is a wilderness because this is a place of our captivity. This is a place of uncultivation. See, a wilderness is an uncultivated land. And when you go into the word uncultivated, you know, dealing with the land part, you know, it's, it's a um, wooded forest land, uh, unkept land. And, you know, when you see those type of lands, it usually got a lot of weeds in it, a lot of grass, high grass, never been cut. You know, basically the, the field would just let go. All right. It looks pretty bad. Have it been cut? Have it been trimmed? Have it been none of that? And that's how Israel was before the Lord gave the elect the truth. And overall, you know, you still have a lot of Israelites that are still uncultivated, you know. But in our uncultivated, uh, I don't know if this is a word, but I'm about to make it up. And our uncultness, uncultivatedness. You know, the Lord gave us water when we was in drought, when we was thirsty, as the scripture said, when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue filled for thirst. I, Yahweh, will hear them and the most high of Israel will forsake them. I will open rivers and high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. So then when you go over. This is what he did. When you go over a chapter over, oops, to Isaiah 42 and 16, it said, And I will bring the blind by a way 
that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. So what I love about these scriptures that I'm reading is that I'm pretty sure every brother can attest to this. This scripture hit home because before we knew the truth, we were crooked. We were blind. We were in darkness. And the Lord made crooked path straights. He made darkness light. Because now we know the truth. We understand why. You know, because I always, I always um, harbor on the point, why? See, the, the Bible give us why to all your questions. So it says, and crooked things straight, these things will I do unto them. That's the elect and not forsake them. So through your process, because basically, matter of fact, real quick. It says, if I commit myself, if I, if a man commit himself unto her, he shall inherit her and his generation shall hold her in possession. That's talking about wisdom. For at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways. See, so that's the balance of the Lord. That's like, so in the spirit, so back in the garden, you know, that um, Adam and Eve, those two who was the keeper of the uh, of, of um the garden of Eden, um they took on the philosophies of the tree, which is a nation when you go to Ezekiel 31, but that's a whole nother lesson. I want to stick to this point. But when he, they took uh, the philosophy of the knowledge of good and evil through the spirit, we did the same thing. So that's why I'm reading the scripture because, um, Wisdom try us by wickedness first, and then it try us by righteousness. But let's continue. So it said, for at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways. That's talking about wisdom. And which, which shows you that it's wickedness. You have wisdom on the left-hand side and wisdom on the right-hand side. That's the balance of the Lord. And it says, and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline. Until she may trust his soul and try him by her law. So before you come into the truth, whatever you was in, you know, that's the wisdom trying you in wicked ways first. If you thought you was a Mr. Know-it-all, you thought whatever you was in, that that was the truth. You've been found out that it's not. The torment and dread that come upon you is after you learn the truth, you realize that you was in the path of death. All right. So go on. But let me read this again. So it said, for at the first, she would walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment her, him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. And when you go back to this scripture, it says, I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. Because when you was in, you know, when wisdom was trying you by wicked ways, you, was, you thought that this was it. Because see, one thing about Christianity, if you was a Christian or any of these religions, because they all really stem from the same you know, branch, which is the Roman Catholic Church. And Esau Edom is the one that came up with um in, in, in this era. Um William um Far Muhammad, he the one that brought um Muslim to the cities of Detroit, which is you know where Jake is. And then you got all these religions that stem from the Roman Catholic Church and Edomites, but all those religions don't really teach you discipline. You know, you still celebrate what you want you still eat what you want you still do what you want all you got to do is just believe literally you just got to say you know jesus forgive me and then you go out and do the same thing over allah you know allah actually act like they more righteous than anybody but they're not that far but i will say that muslims is better than christians i'll tell you that when it comes to discipline but the point is is that when wisdom was trying us by wicked ways, you know, whatever you was in, you thought that you was on the right path. So it says, I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in, in paths that they have not known. And that's the truth. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. 
These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. So that's beautiful, man. So we have something to look forward to. And, you know, the fountains of living water, which is, matter of fact, let's go two chapters over. It said, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your seed and my blessing upon your offspring. So you see how the Lord is always symbolizing water with the truth, you know, because water is life. Like if we was able, because you know, we have to eat our bread to foul among the Gentiles in, in our water too. You know, this world is tainted. But if we actually had real water, like real clean water, your health would be so much better because water is life. That's why the Lord is always, you know, symbolizing water because water symbolizes truth. This truth spring up everlasting life in you. As the scripture said that the flesh profit nothing but the words that I speak unto you, they are, um, um, damn, Dang, I got to get the scripture. See, I swear, maybe maybe just the Lord just want me to just get it instead of quoting it. So it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the water represent the spirit, which they are life. And verse four says, and they which is the elect shall spring up at, among the grass as willows by the water courses. Willows, it's a tree. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it's um it's a plant form of a willow too. But a water course is nothing but a waterfall that end up turning into a river stream. And if you if you got trees and plants around that, then that's the way that it gets fed. So that's us, you know, this water keeps us hydrated and b before we was dehydrated we ain't know what the hell we was doing tongue cleave to the roof of our mouth we ain't know what was going on so matter of fact yeah let, let's stick to john six so it said and yahweh shah said unto them i am the bread of life he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believe on me shall never thirst. See how the Lord's still talking about that water. But now he's talking about bread, too. So the Lord, he used a lot of symbolism. You know, that's why a lot of people couldn't get what he was talking about. See, without the Holy Spirit, you really think that he's talking about literal bread. You know, see, Jeremiah 3 and 15 said, that I will have pastors according to my heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. See, it's symbolic. The Lord deals with metaphors. And that's how you know that the Israelites is who you call so-called blacks and Latinos and Native Americans. Because that's how we talk. When you listen to our music, it's nothing but metaphors. And... This is what he told the woman at the well. It said, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So that's what the fountain of living water brings. Everlasting life. That's everything. That's what we're fighting for. That's what we're trying to attain. So. Mm, I think it's 16. Yeah, it said they, that's talking about the elect, hung, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst anymore, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto the living fountains of waters. And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And it said, and when he, oh yeah, that's the end. That's the, that's going, yeah, that is the last scripture. But, um, let me see, let's go back. 
So it said, For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto the fountains of living waters, and the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So that's after we get delivered. So in the process of us getting delivered, the Lord have said this. It says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That's the water, man. So, the fountains of living waters, you drink of this, you should never thirst. And it's a well springing up in you unto everlasting life. So, hopefully, this video is edifying and shalom.